Certainly, we bless the Lord today for all of his marvelous benefits toward us. He has allowed us to have safe passage through another week. And here we are at the beginning of another Lord's Day. We bless him for his tender mercy, for his loving kindness, and for his magnificent and marvelous grace. I don't know about you, but I'm just excited about all that God has already done for me. Amen. And I'm all excited about what I'm going to get from God today. Amen. Through the singing of Zion's song, through the prayers, and through the reading of the scripture, and through the preached word. And again, we thank all of you who are watching us today on Facebook Live or YouTube. Thank you for joining in with us in this worship service. We hope and we trust that it will be a blessing to you. Call your friends, your family members, and invite them to join in with us. Tell them that St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church, right here, 2870 Headland Drive in on the corner of Ben Hill Road in East Point, Georgia, we are live. Amen, right here on Facebook. God bless you. I have a few announcements I want to make before we go into the furtherance of this service today. I wish everybody who had a birthday and who will have a birthday uh, in this month of May, amen, a very happy, happy, and joyous birthday and many happy returns. Amen. I hope you live to be as long as I have lived and you will reach that status. Amen. I've been a uh, junior. Amen. Recycled teenager and a junior senior citizen. God is good. Amen. So happy, happy birthday to all of you. Amen. On a very sad note, we want to extend our prayers and words of condolences to some of the members of our church and to other people that we know who have gone through this period of bereavement. They have lost loved ones, family members, and friends. We want you to know that we are praying with you and for you as you go through this valley of sorrow and this valley of tears and this valley of grief. Uh, we want to extend our condolences to Brother Tom and Wonder Battle. Uh, Brother Battle lost his mother. She's funeralized just a few days ago. Tom, I know you and Wonder listening or watching us today. 
we want you to know that we're praying for you for your strength in the Lord. Also for Reverend Wayne Avery. God bless him. We know that we lost another faithful member a few weeks ago in the person of Sister Renee Avery, one of our very faithful lawyer members of our praise team. Amen. Reverend Avery, we are praying for you. And then just a few days ago, we also lost uh, the son of uh, Sister Sandra Dorr, a very faithful member of our church, um, and also uh, he was the brother of Jarvis Davis, who also sings in one of our choirs. Let's remember Sister Pat Hunter, uh, who lost a son-in-law a few weeks ago. I don't know whether we mentioned that or not in our previous worship services, but Pat, we are praying for you and for Zena and for Leatrice and for the rest of the family members during this time of loss. And uh, we cannot uh, forget Brother James Walker, uh, whose mother-in-law was funeralized a little over a week ago. And uh, oh, how we miss uh, uh, Sister Jackie Walker, his beloved wife. And then uh, also, uh, we had two uh, giants, one a political giant and the other educational giant who were funeralized this uh, past week. Uh, Councilman C.T. Martin, we want to extend our prayers and condolences to that family and also uh, to the family of Dr. Tobe Johnson, who was a very distinguished professor of political science there at Morehouse College who was funeralized on this past Friday. And then, uh, uh, Sister Carol Lee, I hope you're watching us today. Oh, how we uh, yet remember, amen, Brother Nathaniel Lee. Amen, he's gone, but he's not forgotten. And then to others of you who have had family members uh, that you lost by way of death, we want you to know that this pastor and this church family have you in our prayers and the earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal God is still in the consoling business he's still in the prayer hearing and the prayer answering business God bless each and every one of you well, we get ready to go into our worship service today and again tune in hook up with us put your Holy Ghost Seat belt on, we're getting ready for a very exciting, thrilling worship experience here at St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we're going to have a couple of selections from our praise team led by our great um, minister of music, Dr. Keith Pace, and our praise team worshipers, and also we have a, a scripture, the reading of scripture from uh, Sister Evangelist uh, Vanessa Thomas, followed by a prayer from Reverend Tanya Clark, and then we have another selection, and then we have the preached word coming from our own illustrious co pastor, the Reverend Christopher E. Carlo Taylor Sr. God bless you. We love all of you and we miss all of you and all your you to continue to remain safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, practice social distancing. Amen. Amen. This virus is still not over yet. It is still escalated in certain places and certainly we want to practice safe protocol. I know we're going to do that. In the meantime, you pray for us and we're going to pray for you. Love all of you. Let's get ready for this worship. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Come on, please.
that we is who you are. We worship you, Lord, and we bless your name. That is who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good. 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 Good morning, St. Paul. Good morning. It's Pentecostal Sunday, y'all. We ought to be excited in here today. Amen? Hallelujah. It was on this day over 2,000 years ago that the Holy Ghost came in like a mighty Russian wind. Amen? We're all here on one accord this morning. We're standing in the need of a revival today, you would say. We ask that the Lord let breathe up through here today like a mighty Russian wind and endow us with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Your scripture reading today is from Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. And when the day of Pentecost had come, yes. had fully come, it says, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Mm -hmm. and, that, and then appeared unto them tongues like fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And began to speak with other tongues. Well, I'm trying to tell y'all something today. Yeah. I know I got the Holy Ghost, but I want some more of it. And I asked the Lord today to come up through here like a mighty rushing wind. We all are here. And I pray to God that we're all on one accord in mind, body, spirit. Amen. That the Holy, the Holy Ghost may visit us today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 All right, all right. Amen, amen, amen. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to the Most High God. Uh, somebody out there say hallelujah this morning. Go ahead and give the Lord some praise. bow our heads and close our eyes wherever you may be entering into the holy of holies understanding that once we are in his presence all things are made anew once we stand in the presence of the most high God all our prayers will be answered the way maker miracle worker, promise keeper. That is who you are. Father God, we come just giving you glory for being who you are. Dear God, you are the master of the universe, the ruler of the nation, the, the owner of the world, dear God. You are the great I am. Dear God, we come to you just giving you total praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same sun, our name is true. Your name is truly worthy to be praised. Dear God, we thank you for being the great triune. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to come down and fall fresh on us. Thank you for filling us with the Holy Ghost, dear God, as we learn, as we are groomed, as we are fashioned in the order that you have set for our lives. Dear God, we come thanking you for things being as well as they are. Dear God, things may not be favorable as we think them in the natural, but in the spirit realm, we know that things are just as you have ordained. Dear God, we don't come to you with hearts that are heavy laden. Rather, we come to you with a spirit of faith, knowing that you're going to work all things for us, through us, out for our good. Dear God, we come as intercessors, lifting up our family and friends to God. We ask that you would bring them into the fold, into your saving power, dear God. Those who do not know you in the free pardoning of your sins, dear God, we ask that you would bring them forth. 
Let them come running to the throne of grace saying, I yield, I yield. I want to study war no more. I want to do your perfect will. Let them come to know who you are and to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord, Lord Jesus. and Savior. Dear God, we come interceding on behalf of your church. Dear God, we know that the church lies within us, but we come interceding on the body of Christ. And dear God, we ask that you would continue to fill us up to use us for your glory. Dear God, we ask that you would increase the spirit that you have given, the gifts that you have given to us, dear God, whatever they may be. We ask that you just steer them up so that we can use them in our day-to-day -day lives. We can use them in this bleak and dying world, or we can use them so that men will see your glory in our story. Dear God, we come interceding on behalf of the city of Atlanta and surrounding suburbs of this great state. Dear God, we come interceding on behalf of the nation, dear God. We know that everything that happens has to come and go by you. So dear God, we're not worried today. We're not worried about the calamities of this world. We're not worried today. Rather, we have the faith that, and believe that that faith that is bigger than the size of a grain of mustard seed. And we know that because of our faith in you, you truly remove the mountains in our lives. So, and dear God, we're not worried about our finances because we know that you are our all in all. We're not worried about our health, dear God, because we know that you are the great healer. Yeah, yeah. We're not worried about our families, dear God, because we know that you have the earth and the world in the palm of your hands. And dear God, we are not worried about the state of the world because we know that it is fashioned. It was fashioned just with a word from you. And dear God, we know that all the way until the end of the earth, you will be with us. Now, Lord, those who may be in convalescent centers who need you, we ask that you send your healing angels to comfort them. Those who may be behind uh, prison bars, dear God, we ask that you encourage them so that they can be resurrected in the spirit. And those who may be lying under the bridge, those who may not have a home, those who may be classified as homeless, dear God, we ask that you give them a home today and somewhere in your kingdom. As we go forth on this day, we ask that you not let us depart from your grace. As we go forth in the spirit of worship, we ask that you fill us right now with the Holy Ghost and allow it to just permeate through our bodies. Dear God, forgive us of our sins, dear God, the ones that we have committed and the ones that we know not of. Forgive us not for not always doing things the way that you have called for us to do. It is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ that we give you praise. It is in the name above all names that we give you the total glory. It is in the name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we thank you and we praise you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And as people of God, we say amen. 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 amen and amen.
that Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, break us, shape us, mold us and make us after thy perfect will, Spirit of the living God. Please, sir, fall fresh on us. We thank you for this hour now we share together. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for what you did a long time ago on that great day of Pentecost. For without that day, there would be no church. And without that day, we would all still be lost in our sins. But we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Now, God, speak to us, teach us what you would have us to know this day. Use us to your glory. 
let your Holy Spirit pour out on all men, women, and children. These things we ask in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, our Master, Lord, and Redeemer. It's in his name we ask. And all the believers said amen. giving honor to the esteemed senior pastor of this church in the person of Dr. Clayton Eugene Taylor Sr., my father, my mentor, my earthly inspiration in this gospel ministry, to all of my dear brothers and sisters of the cloth, God bless all of you. Thank you for your prayerful support. To all of the leadership and the membership and the friends, as well as well wishers of this, the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church, we welcome you in the spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And for that, we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. This is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And certainly we are ever grateful and ever thankful for the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit on humanity. And so today I want to teach about a little bit about his spirit, about the Holy Spirit, for uh, his glorification and for our edification, that we may be made better as we know and learn more about him. I want to call to your attention today two passages of scripture that I would like to couple together for our understanding. The first from 1 John, the fifth chapter, and verse number seven. And then we shall look at Acts, the first chapter, verse number eight. But beginning at 1 John, the fifth chapter, and verse number seven. The word of God tells us this. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And then in the book of Acts, the first chapter and the eighth verse, the word of God says, but ye shall receive power My Lord. after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Those will be our foundational scriptures for today. For it is written that man must not live by bread alone, but out of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the living God. From these two passages of scripture, I want to talk about broken circuit believers. Broken circuit believers. As we celebrate this Glorious Lord today on Pentecost Sunday. I would contend that there are far too many believers that are attempting to operate in their faith with a broken circuit. All right. A broken circuit in both clear and lucid language is when electrical power has been lost because the flow of electricity mm -hmm. is interrupted by a disconnection. All right. And when there is a disconnection, the source of power will never reach its destination to whatever receiving it to turn it on 
and to cause it to work properly as it was created and designed to do. For many, not all, but for many mm -hmm. who are part of this band of baptized believers who we call Christians, I believe that too many are casually and unwittingly stuck somewhere between Calvary and Pentecost. Though they are water baptized, they haven't been baptized in the fire. For most, there is no impediment that prevents believing and understanding the person, the nature, and position of God as the Father nor in the full humanity and divinity of Christ Jesus as the Son. We believe in his birth, his life, his earthly mission, his death, and his resurrection. But unfortunately for so many, this is the place of intermission in our faith. Mm -hmm. This is where our faith sometimes becomes disconnected. The place where faith is hindered and faith is held up and spiritual growth and development is stunted because they believe in and have made a relationship with God. They have accepted Christ Jesus as their redeemer and as their savior. But yet they have failed in their pursuit of complete spiritual maturity. Spiritual Maturity is directly proportional to Christ-centeredness. And if we are ever more preoccupied with the subjective benefits of the faith than with the person and the pleasure of Christ himself, then that is the very mark of spiritual immaturity. But now, the spirit is who bears witness to and who glorifies Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So follow me now. When we are okay with being satisfied, but not sanctified, it becomes easy to lose sight and begin glorifying the gifts of the giver rather than the giver of the gifts. To say that we have been saved but not sanctified and Holy Ghost filled. It's a sign that there's a broken circuit somewhere. All right, all right. Connection has been lost. We have not reached our full potential and power in Christ. And thusly I conclude that there are so many Christians today who are stuck somewhere between Calvary, where Jesus died for our salvation, and Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit was poured out for our consecration. Yes, we believe in God as the Father and Creator of all things. Yes, we believe in Jesus, his vicarious suffering and his substitutionary death and even his a miraculous resurrection, thereby we are saved. But for many, the book stops there. For many, they don't go any further in their faith and in the totality of God. And therefore, they are not living in the fullness and in the completeness of the plan and the purpose for God in their lives. Now, I know that we don't we don't do this intentionally. We don't do this on purpose. Surely every believer desires uh, to walk and to live in the purpose and power that God intended. But for so many, they don't reap the full benefit due to a lack of understanding the spirit and his work on us, in us, and through us. Even for Bible readers who have studied the Bible consistently, mm -hmm. the person and the work of the Holy Spirit 
can still be a difficult concept for us to grasp. And the reason for that mainly is because we have less explicit revelation in the Bible regarding the Holy Spirit than we do about the Father and about the Son. There's somewhat a lack of imagery concerning the Holy Spirit in comparison to God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. God the Father is understood fairly well by most because Uh, The figure of a father is familiar to nearly everybody. Jesus the son is not too difficult to conceptualize because he actually appeared on earth in human form. And men observed him and historians reported on him. But the spirit is intangible. And sometimes he's challenging for us to visualize. And oftentimes... This is where the disconnection most likely happens in the understanding of the believer. I want to share with you today just a few truths about the Holy Spirit. I can't tell you all of them for the brevity of time, but I want to share with you just a few truths about the Spirit to help you understand who he is all right, all right. and what exactly he does in the life of the believer. Mm-hmm. Say it, brother. Say it. Let me say this first. Let it be known that the Holy Spirit is not an it. That's right. That's right. I know we call him the Holy Spirit, but that doesn't make him an it. The is just simply part of his name. But he is a person, a person with his own identity, his own personality, and his own position within the Holy Trinity. That's right. But now to understand the deity and the person of the Spirit, you have to first understand the Trinity. And for many, the Trinity is somewhat of a perplexing consideration because all of our lives, from grade school on up, we've always been taught and we've always learned that one is simply one. It's no more and it's no less. Mm-hmm. But one is one. Yeah, yeah. One is not two. One is not many or uh, plural. One is not dual or numerous, but one simply means one. That's right. There was a song that said one is the loneliest number <laughs> of them all. All right. This is what we've learned to know in the natural. But when it comes to God in the spiritual, the Godhead is one, yes. But there are three that are within that one. That's right, that's right. As believers in Jehovah God, in Yahweh Elohim, we have a monotheistic faith, meaning that we believe that there ain't but one God. The Trinity does not suggest that there are three gods or multiple gods. No, but we believe in the one and only true God. God is three persons, but yet he has only one essence. Scripture throughout affirms the absolute unity of God. For example, if you look there in Genesis 1 and 1, In the beginning, God, in the singular tense, created the heavens and the earth. Uh Deuteronomy 6 and 4, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Exodus 20 and verse number 3, you shall have no other gods before me. Isaiah 44 and 6, I am the first and the last. Apart from me, there is no other God. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 45 and 18, I am the Lord and there is no other. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4 and 6, there is one God and one Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. The book of James, the second chapter and verse 19, if you believe God is one, then you are doing well. All right, all right. 
There was one by the name of Norman L. Geisler who suggests that God has a plurality of persons and a unity of essence. God is three persons, but yet has only one nature. There's only one what in God, but there are three who's in that one what. God has three eyes in his one it. There are three subjects, but only yet one object. What does guys the mean by all of that? Look back at our focal scripture in 1 John. The Bible says, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Say that, Reverend. Well, now you may be asking me, how can three be one? For those who are still having trouble trying to make sense of it all, I'd like to break it down this way. Let me share this example with you one more time. Mm -hmm. You take, for example, H2O, mm -hmm. the chemical compound for water. Yeah. Two times hydrogen, one time oxygen. Water is water any way you look at it. That's right. You can put water in a freezer overnight. Mm -hmm. And when you come back the next morning, that water would have turned into ice. We call that water in its solid form. Uh -huh. You can take that same block of ice and put it in a pot over a hot stove and leave it on low and it will create vapors that we call steam. You can take that same steam water, those vapors, and that same block of ice and let it sit out overnight on your countertop in a cup and come back the next morning and drink from it. And we call that water in its liquid form. Yeah. But whether it be solid whether it be steam or whether it be in the liquid form, water is still water any way you look at That's it. That's right, Reverend. Good, good, good. And with the Godhead, my, my. the Holy Trinity, some of you may call him Father. Mm -hmm. Some of you may call him the Word. Some of you may call him by his name the Holy Ghost. But he's still one God. Yes, sir. Three different natures in his character, but only one God. So the Trinity consists of one God and three persons. Therefore, we can sing in conjunction with the seraphims and the cherubims, holy, 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 yes, Lord God Almighty, God in three persons. Yes, blessed, blessed, blessed yes. Trinity. Oh, praise God. So now the Holy Spirit, he is the third person in the Godhead. Yes, he is. We've learned much about God. We've learned much about Jesus. But a complete relationship with him requires that we must also be acquainted, familiar, and hooked up, endowed with the Holy Spirit. Can I get a witness in the house today? There must not be a disconnect. There must not be a broken circuit within the believer in our faith. And though scripture does not leave much isolated, specific, uh, systematic discussion on the Holy Spirit, we have this discourse from Jesus. Mm -hmm. In the book of John, the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter and verse number 16, listen to what he says. He says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Amen. To be with you forever, Jesus refers to him, the Holy Spirit, as the paraclete meaning one called alongside to help us. Yeah. He is the comforter, the counselor, the advocate, the intercessor, the supporter, and the strengthener of mankind. Yeah. And if by chance you are saved but have not cultivated the gifts and the works of the Holy Spirit in your life and in your faith, I came by to tell you today that you are missing the best part of your relationship with Christ Jesus. You done bought yourself a cow that ain't got no milk. His involvement is necessary for both conversion and for regeneration. My Lord. Conversion is when we have turned mm -hmm. to surrender to God. Conversion is when we have given up our life of sin and given our life 
to Christ. When we repent from our lives of sin, we profess our faith in the promises and the work of Christ there at Calvary. Jesus shows us in John 16, 8 through 11, and when he comes, talking about the Holy Spirit here, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and of judgment. He says concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness because I will go to the Father and you will no longer see me. And concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. So without the work of the Holy Spirit, there's first of all no full conversion. Then secondly, regeneration is the miraculous transformation of a person being born again. But this time, born in the Spirit. If you will remember Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Truly I say unto you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Regeneration, being born again, comes only through the work of the Holy Spirit. And then not only is the spirit the acting agent in our conversion and regeneration, but in your walk with Christ every day, in your effort to live for him every day, to live a life that's pleasing in his sight, to uh, be uh, conformed to the image of Christ. You cannot do this all by yourself, but you got to have help from the aid and assistance of the Holy Spirit. His Spirit must have taken up residence in your hearts. The work of the Spirit is not complete when one becomes a believer, But rather, the Spirit's work is just beginning in you when you become a believer in Christ Jesus. The Spirit, he performs several roles in the life of the believer, and I'm out of here today. Look back at Jesus' words in John 14. The Spirit will indwell and illuminate the believers. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Jesus had been and in fact still is the greatest earthly teacher and leader ever to live, ever will live. But in the flesh His physical teachings, his physical leading was done by external word and example during his time here on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. But now the work of the Spirit is able to affect us more intensely because he's not working from the outside. He's not working externally. But the spirit is on the inside and he works from the inside to the outside. Miller J. Erickson suggested to get to the very center of one's thinking and emotion and lead one to all truths as Jesus promised. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. The Lord says when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, For me, he will speak those things and declare to you the things that are mine and what I want to tell you and teach to you. So in so many words, when the spirit is living within you and speaking God's truth to you, it ought to make you act a little different than those who ain't got the spirit. I believe I'll say that one more time. When the spirit lives on the inside of you, you ought to act a little different than those who don't know him. 
For example, just before you get ready to cuss that person out. Because they done got on your last nerve. You ought to hear the spirit on the inside. Urging you to turn the other cheek. When you are about to repay hurt for hurt. Get yourself a little get back when others have done wrong to you. You ought to hear that little voice on the inside. Whispering in your ear, you got to forgive them. Not just this time, but even 70 times, seven times. When you are about to do wrong and you know you're about to do wrong, you ought to hear that little voice on the inside that's whispering that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. He will encourage us to act right, yes, sir. to think right, to walk right, and to talk right. To show us and remind us of what the Lord expects from his beloved children. So not only does the spirit indwell and illuminate the life of the believer, but the spirit also teaches the believer. Gospel of John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. Yeah, yeah. The Spirit will teach us. He will remind us of everything that Jesus taught us and help us in our understanding of the Holy Scripture. Good, good, good. If you want to understand and know his word, you got to study his word. But if you want to study his word diligently, you got to have the teaching and the understanding power mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit. That's right. The enemy, uh-huh. he is the master of deceit. Mm-hmm. There's no greater thing that he loves to do than to take the word of God. And it twisted mm. and make it look like it's saying something that is really not saying. My Lord. That's what the devil does. Every time we go wrong, every time we fall short in the error of our ways, it's because we were deceived. It's not because we don't know the word, but it's because the devil didn't got in our minds and he's twisted the word. Mm-hmm. It's the same device that he used on man back in the Garden of Eden. When he came unto Eve and and told her, I know God said that if you eat from this tree, you, you're surely going to die, but you're not going to die. He just doesn't want you to know as much as he knows. And that's just what the enemy does even in present day. He tries to manipulate the word of God. And from that very day, sin entered into the world. And then death by sin. And so death passed to all men from that day. So when we read our Bibles, when we're studying the Word of God, before you open that Bible, before you open up your app on your phone, take two seconds and just ask the Spirit to teach you and to guide you in your reading. To teach you to understand the infallible truths of the Word of God. You don't have to be a hermeneutical genius to study the Word of God. You don't have to be a theological expert to study the Word of God. But when you get ready to study Take two seconds just to ask that his spirit would indwell in you and speak to your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. The spirit also makes intercession on our behalf. I'm real happy about this one. The book of Romans 8, chapter, verse 26 through 27 say this, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words and he who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God When his spirit lives within, he's always at work 
on our behalf. He's working in the background, interceding for us, praying for us to the Father, because oftentimes we don't even know what we ought to be praying for. Maybe you've never been in that type of circumstance in your life. I know I have. I'm just speaking for myself here. But I've been in some situations that were so great and had such great magnitude to them that they were so much bigger than me that I didn't even know how to pray for it. Have you ever opened your mouth but you didn't even know what to start praying for? Maybe some of you have been there with me. But I'm glad that I have a helper. Yes, sir. I'm glad that I have an advocate who can take my earthly groans and turn them into heavenly dialects and tell the Lord everything that's going on yes, before I can even utter it from my mouth. Oh, the Spirit is making that intercession for us, telling the Father exactly what we need, how we need it, when we need it, where we need it. He prays wisely in intercession for us that the perfect will of the Father may be done in the life of the believer. And let me conclude with this thought. The Spirit is the one who gives us our power. Back to our text, Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. A whole lot of folk are plugged in, but they still ain't got no power. Because they have not welcomed in the Spirit of the Lord. It's not enough to confess the Lord Jesus. It's not enough to confess your belief in him. But if you want to receive real power in your life, then you got to make a connection between the Father, a connection between the Son, and a connection between the Holy Spirit. If you want to have the power of the promises, then you got to get connected. If you want to have the power of authority of speaking that which you want to speak out of your mouth, you got to get connected with all three of them. If you want to have the power to pray in faith, then you got to learn how to get connected. If you want the power to remove mountains in your life, then you got to get connected. If you want the power to make the enemy get behind you, then you got to get connected. If you want the power to walk in the things of Christ, to talk in the things of Christ, to live in the things of Christ, you got to get connected. I don't know about you, but I want it. I need it. I got to have it. The Holy Ghost power. If you want it, go back to the altar. Down on your knees and stay there. Until you get that Holy Ghost power. My, my, my. Can I get a witness in here today? If you want power in your life, get connected. the power source. Yeah, yeah. You waiting on your healing. You waiting on your miracle. You waiting on your breakthrough. That comes through the work of his Holy Spirit. Get connected today. God bless you. Stay connected today. By the rich. Stay plugged in. And receive your power. If any of you are out there today what a word, what a word, what a word. who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. as your personal Lord and Savior, or perhaps you're a backslider who needs to return home, the doors of the church are open for you today. And he's waiting for you to come to give you that power when you receive the Holy Ghost in your life. The doors are open. If you want to be a member of this church, if you want to be a member of the body of Christ, drop your name in our inbox. And we'd love to welcome you to our fellowship. The Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Do you want it? Do you want it? The doors open for you. The Holy Ghost 
Certainly we give thanks to the Spirit of Christ Jesus who has been in this place today, who has filled us and revived us and reminded us of the truths of God's word. 
We thank all of you for your presence today, for your participation in our worship experience. And we pray something said or done in this place has been of an encouragement to you in your spiritual journey. I encourage you again, if you are not connected with all three of them, you're missing something. There's a broken circuit somewhere on the inside. And when he comes in your life, you'll start to see power in the things that you do and in the things that you say and in how you live your life witnessing and worshiping him. Get connected today. Ask him for his spirit and he will give it to you. Thank God for his Holy Spirit. Let me say just before we dismiss that we are in celebration season. I don't know if it was mentioned prior to my entering the sanctuary or not, but I do want to again invite all of you out with us on the first and the second Sundays of June to celebrate the man of God, our pastor who God has given us for 55 long years. Amen. Amen. 55 long years in pastoral care and pastoral ministry over this body of Christ. And I don't know about any of you who are watching us out there, but I'm so glad that Dr. Clayton Eugene Taylor Sr. is my pastor. Amen. And so the first and second Sunday, I want all of our members, many of you I have not seen yet at our parking lot worship experience, but we will be outside praising the God of our salvation, honoring the man of God in fellowship responsibly, and we are coming to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm so excited about the first and second weekend of the month. There's more information listed there on our Facebook page. Please stop by and check that out. And uh, we look forward to seeing all of you. We've got a fun, spirit-filled weekend planned. I believe that's the second weekend of the month. We've got something we're going to do out here on our yard that we've never done before. So I want you all to come out. And don't come out in no dress clothes, okay? We want you to come out uh, looking good, but casually, okay? Christian casual, let's say that. But we're going to have a good time right out there on our uh, church lawn, listen to some good music and celebrate and fellowship responsibly again. We're going to be safe in everything that we do, but we just want to celebrate God and celebrate the man of God uh, for, for certainly we should give honor where honor is due. And so, Pastor, we thank you for your service. Amen. God bless you. We thank you and we love you so much and we thank you for your guidance and leadership and uh, to all our ministry leaders, please be busy doing what you were supposed to do. We want to make sure that we treat our pastor well and show him all the love we can show him on this special 55th anniversary. Amen. God bless you. I know you're going to do just that. Uh, again, be reminded of our weekly services on Tuesday mornings at 9 o'clock a.m. on Thursday evenings at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock a.m. and then our Sunday school breakdown. You can follow all of those on our Facebook page and some are on YouTube. Follow us there. Meet me back here at the Paul. May God bless you and bless you real good. I love you. God keep you. God allow his favor and his face to smile on you forever. Continue to be safe. Continue to love one another and continue to love our God. Until the next time, Meet me back here at the Paul. Oh, 
Corona. Hoy 